Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines and part 2 in this series on young miniatures one tenth scale bust of a German stormtrooper from World War I. This is a high quality resin production from an excellent manufacturer and in part 1 I covered the painting of the eyes, head and face using Andrea Colors superb acrylic paints. To keep things simple, I've made this part all about painting the uniform, even if, as you'll find out, I actually alternated between the body and face. To kick things off, I took the primed and filled torso from part one and sprayed a light, watered down mist coat of black. This was to reveal the shadow areas. You can see it has landed in the creases and folds. Around this time I was also painting the accessories, as well as the face, so that might explain why some shots show things out of sequence. Here again, I'll deal with these in another final video. Back to the uniform then, and first I wanted to block out all the base colours, starting with brown. In this case it's the darkest reference from Andrea's brown set. As you can see, it's applied pretty loosely, as speed was more important to me than being super precise. I followed up with a canvas shade from their splinter camo set and picked out the stick grenade bags. Onto the tunic or greatcoat next. And Andrea Colors Feel Grey set, like many of their releases, includes all you need to paint uniforms in an easy to follow step by step way. They cover fairly well but expect to apply a couple of coats. Just work fast and get everything blocked out. Try not to paint over previous work, and here you can see what coverage is like after one coat. You might spot the collar was also painted in a dark green off camera, again from the splinter camo reference, and it's the fourth colour from the set used earlier. At this stage I use the original brown reference darkened with a touch of black to apply a second coat to the leather, concentrating on the darkest recesses. You can see on the fur backpack it helps to show shadow whilst also adding a further coat and deeper colour overall. It was time to pick a paint from their black set and using this greyish shade I repainted the blanket in a colour which worked a lot better. Buttons and buckles also got a covering in this grey as a base. And the collar got a further coat in dark green to neaten everything up and provide greater coverage. Here's how our bust figure is coming along. Again it's just blocked out colours at this point. Other elements needed their colours too and this strap was picked out in the familiar canvas shade. Whilst it pays to be neat you can see that I'm not overly careful as it can all be rectified later. Step 2 calls for the first effects over the base colours. On this model I went for highlights using the addition of an off-white from their white set. I applied thin coats of the lighter mix over the grenade bags, trying to paint the most prominent highlight areas and leave a bit of shadow or delineation around details. The edges or hems got a more pronounced application of highlight. Prior to fully highlighting the coat, I used the base mix lightened with just a touch of off-white. This was mainly to tidy up past mistakes and get a bit more colour where it was needed most. Now I worked my way through the steps in the painting set and made sure to blend each highlight with a thick brush. I moved fairly quickly onto the fourth field grey shade, labelled in the set as the third highlight, and used that around the most prominent creases and high points. Edges and folds, including near the neckline, got a bit more attention and careful blending with a flat brush.
little creases and details surrounding buttonholes also got the same treatment, before focusing on the leather, which would be weathered and worked repeatedly. This started with mottled black effects, and you can see the rifle strap has already had a lot of weathering first. Black was dabbed on or painted into the deepest shadows before being carefully feathered. To get the scratches, two references were used, including this off-white or grey tone from ACS-01, and the fourth reference from their brown set, ACS-013. I alternated between these colours or combinations of them and added scratches all over the leather in repeated applications. Here you can see me switch to the lighter brown and add further scuffing or scratches, especially around edges which were prone to wear and tear. I will move back to the fur pack leather strap soon, but for now I'm focusing on the rifle's sling which would be a lot more used and worn. I keep weathering it until I'm satisfied. At this point I added some very faint washes to the main leather straps, and in a bit the ammo pouches, to tone everything down a tad, and it also helps create delicate mottling. Once fully dry, more scratches and washes can be overpainted on the straps. At first it will look extreme, but subsequent thin translucent coats in the dark base make everything more subtle. You can even add small amounts of varnish, matte and or satin to increase the effect. Once more or less happy, Andrea Colour's red set was very useful for picking out the details of the epaulettes. The advantage being that following the instructions you can quickly get a highlight effect with each reference. Here is the brightest highlight being added to the edges. If you need to emphasise shadows again, just return to the first reference and use a very thin brush. More off-white was added to the second grenade bag highlight shade to give even more definition. This third highlight was applied as necessary to make the bandoliers pop. Eventually the inside folds got a similar effect. The gas mask strap received thin lines to make it look like there was interesting surface texture or weaving. Barring a few corrections and repairs needed here and there, this is really coming together and I test fitted the head which I would largely painted by this point. Here are a few shots of progress with the rifle and mess tin also test fitted for these images. I will cover these elements separately in another film. For the fifth step I will be weathering the bust to make it seem more like his environment has affected his outfit. I must first attach the accessories, and the rifle was added with a dab of superglue. I've made a previous video on weathering your figures, and I've shown airbrush stippling effects in multiple videos. 
Suffice to say, I turned down the pressure on my Iwata HPCH so much that the paint splatters. In this instance, I used thin enamel mud, oil and grime colours, speckled on at low, low pressure. The head and helmet were attached with white glue for now, as I would remove them and reattach them a few more times going forwards. This is how he looks, and next time I'll finish everything off and cover the painting of all the accessories. See you in the next video, and bye for now. Subscribe for our latest videos.